One of our key players are playing and we're at it. I don't think anyone in the world can beat us. Can you remember what you were doing when you heard that Jürgen Klopp was going? Such a shame to, to see him leave. My dad doesn't really speak about, about United anymore, so I don't know. I'm going to have to have the conversation with him. I think I'm turning him, you know. I've been trying for years now. His own team is trying to turn him, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know what you, what you guys do at this time of year isn't, isn't normal, right? Win, 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 win. End of season. Trophy. That isn't normal, right? That isn't. You've made that normal, in so much as teams like Arsenal, Liverpool know they can't make a mistake because you guys don't make them. Do you understand that, or does it just feel normal to you? Yeah, we understand it. We know if we win the league this year, it's never been done um, that many times in a row as well. So that's something we have our eyes on um, when we come out to put our boots on. This the sayings there on the wall, and we all believe we can do it. So we're looking forward to the challenge and. We like to do things that's never been done before and put ourselves in history. When I put my boots on, I always just look at it and think, mm, why, why not? Let's try and do it. You just said something a minute ago that made me think. You said that you, you feel like you're one of the, or the team's go-to players now, a key player. When we met, and I think it was uh, four, four years ago, you said to me that you still felt then as though every time you turned up for training, you wanted to get... Kevin De Bruyne's autograph or David Silva's autograph. You, it was almost as if you were saying, I don't quite feel like I'm worthy of, of this yet. How long did that feeling hang around? I think this year now I've, I've matured a little bit. I think my game's come on a long way as well. Um, yeah, it's obviously hard for me, you know, being a ball boy and going through every age group in, in the city teams and then making it to the first team. I did feel like that for a couple of years, but I feel like now um, I've settled and I feel a part of the team and s someone who can help the team achieve good things. You said to me back then that you felt um, that it almost as if it, you weren't sure when it would change, when you would stop feeling that. Like you said to me that you knew you had to because you were playing for Man City. You can't f spend your career feeling like that. Did you have a word with yourself or did it just come? Naturally. No, I, I don't think that's ever going to change, you know, I'm obviously I, I was a big City fan growing up, but I think that feeling's still going to be the same. What was in your head in terms of what you thought you wanted to achieve, what you, what you could achieve? Lots of people around this football club and in this the blue half of the City had it in their head what they, what they wanted you to achieve. What did you think was going to be possible for you when you were 14, 15, 16? I thought the challenge was going to be um, a mountain to climb to even reach the first team. Did you? So in my head, I just had it as, I just want to make at least one appearance and just make my debut and say I've done it. Right. Um, and then once I did that, you know, I thought, no, I can actually play here. I can keep up with the standard and, and, and handle it. So as time went on and the more I trained with the first team, um, yeah, I just got more comfortable and, and believed that I could play there. I just want to show you that. This is off your Insta, by the way. It's not a pitch that you haven't seen, but I just think that's a fabulous pitch. Of you with Yaya and Sergio, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, about 15 then, I think. Yeah, how's one that of my first training sessions. How does that kind of, I mean, look how young you look there. I mean, how does that <laughs> make you feel when you look at something like that? Proud, obviously, I've come a long way. Like being a ball boy, just being close to him and then sharing the cha same changing room is, yeah, a surreal moment. I remember, obviously, going into the rondo for the first time. And just thinking, wow, this standard is, is the best <laughs> I've ever seen. And I was thinking, what? How am I going to reach that that level? Um, and like I said, as time went on and the more I trained, um, you just moved the ball a lot quicker, and you you understand their game as well, and it and it brought my game on. I wouldn't want to do a rondo with David Silva and no, nah, you're not Raheem, getting the ball back. <laughs> Raheem Sterling and Sergio Aguero. <laughs> you're there for at least that. ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, the story about. 2012 and the last day of the season obviously you were there um, it's such a good story that people at this club actually think that you were the one who gave the ball back for the corner for Zeko's equaliser no, wasn't no. so, I wasn't the ball but I was behind the yeah, goal yeah but you were there with the your mum weren't you yeah I was there with my yeah, mum yeah. which I've subsequently turned out understand to be the truth yeah. but you're on the pitch I believe I didn't know that yeah so obviously the all the fans were on after the game and I remember me and my mum was thinking right, why, why not now let's just get on there so and where were you in the stadium? Which just there? behind the goal that Guaguero oh, scored. Okay, right. So I wasn't far behind the goal that he scored. And um, yeah, for me, the biggest thing to happen in the club's history. Because I think without that goal, we don't 
achieve what we, we have today. So, yeah, a lot of thanks to Sergio Aguero for that goal. That's mental to think that you were there then. And then the next time there's a moment of enormous drama, whether it's Vinny's goal against Leicester from 30 yards or the, or the, or the final day of the season against Villa, whatever you want to talk about. You were, you're not there, but you're, but you're there. I mean, that's, that's, that, that's the type of thing you read in the comic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's why you can probably see the, the passion every game that, that you can see in me because, you know, I've, I've been a fan and, and seeing us win leagues and then I've been on the same pitch as them. So, so, yeah, I have so much passion every day to try and do the best I can for the club. What was your dad like that night, by the way, when you got home? On Not home? happy. <laughs> he acted happy for me, but I don't think he was deep down. Did he? <laughs> and is he, I think I read some of that you think he's a bit of a like half a City fan now. Has he managed to get over the whole thing yet? Right? Yeah, I think, I think I'm think i turning him, you know. I've been trying for years now. Um, well, he doesn't really speak too his much His own about team is trying to turn him, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad doesn't really speak about, about United anymore, so I don't know. I'm going to have to have the conversation with him. This club... Obviously, there's lots of money. You've got players in that dressing room from all, all around the world. Um, do you understand why you you are in, you, why it's important to have someone like you and to have others? You've mentioned them coming up, Rico, Oscar coming up behind. Is that do you, do you get it? Yeah, like the story is nice. Obviously, I, I understand that. I've, I've been through every age group, and it's such a nice story. Um, and I'm just happy that I've done it, you know, for, for the younger players now in the academy because, you know, anything's possible and if I've done it, they, they can all do it as well. So it's just nice that I've, I've made it to the first team and I've been here for a couple of seasons now. So hopefully it gives Rico and Oscar that belief that it, it's possible. And is it, does it feel different for you, do you think, to, to some of the others because of, and I'm talking about your teammates, because of... Where you've come from and what and and your backstory with the club? Uh, maybe yeah. I feel like it means a little bit more to me, obviously being a city fan and how I grew up. So yeah, I think I think it's a little bit different. I would and, say. And all just and I'd imagine that pressure comes with that as well because you know I've been lived around here long enough to have remember all the things that were said about you when it was like oh why is you not why is you not going out on loan and all the rest of it. You know, I remember you people talking about you at this club when you were 14, 15, and you, all the way through, that must bring some kind of pressure. Definitely, I had to become an adult at a very young age with, you know, people saying a lot of things that I should go on, go on loan and he's not playing enough. Um, but I think that's where my character and my personality comes into it. I always had belief and um, I had a few conversations with the manager as well. Um, he just told me to be patient just keep working hard and put my head down in training. And I took that advice and, yeah, train, train like an animal every day in training, train the best I could, and, and now you're starting to see the rewards from, from doing that every, every day. Everybody used to say, why is Phil Foden not being sent out on loan? Why is Phil Foden not in the team? Did you ever say that? Did you ever say that to him? No, because if you, at the time, you look at the, the scenario, and I had the likes of De Bruyne, um, David in front of me, um, so if we're being realistic at, at that age, you know, you're not going to um, play over them. Um, I knew that and I knew as time went on and the more I got old, older and the more of improving with the lads that, that, that it was possible. So I had to be realistic at the time. I, I probably um, didn't deserve to play much game time back then. It always looks to me as if it must be exhausting working for, for Pep, kind of the full on nature of his, his management. Is that is that how it is on the inside? That's how it looks from the outside. No, nah, it's total opposite. It's so enjoyable. Um, for me, I love it when a manager always wants to push you and he's never happy with how good you're doing. He thinks you can do even better. Um, for me, that just makes me a better person, a better player. So I love how demanding, demanding he is and how much he wants to win. Um, you'd think how much he's, he's won in his career. He would be tired by now, but Every season is is that same, and he goes into so much detail to to help us and help us play a better game. I don't remember. I don't think you've, I don't think you've had one of those on field lectures that he sometimes gives out to. Oh, a couple of times. Have you? Oh, okay. <laughs> a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> and you just have to take field? it on board, and yeah, like I said, he knows best. He's 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 got so much experience in the game, and sometimes you don't see things on the pitch, and 
he can see it from where he stood and you just have to take the advice and yeah that's why we've won so much it's, it's down to him and and the players taking his advice from the outside i look at those and think blimey can you not just wait until you get in the dressing room for that you have to do it in front of sixty thousand people <laughs> yeah that, that's what i said before he's just so determined and when he sees something he's he's very vocal about it for, for the right reason you're now in a place where other kids kids at this club kids who haven't made it at this club yet kids in all kinds of different areas of Manchester, kids in Stockport, kids around the country, frankly, will look at, will look at you. And, and there are others, there are people like you know, Jude and, uh, and, and, and Jack, etc. But, but you, playing for your hometown, hometown club, looking at you, saying, oh, can I do that? You know, how does that feel to be on the other side of that equation now? Yeah, really, other, you know, really nice. Um, I want to be a role model for the younger kids. Um, in my area and also in the academy and just set the right examples and you know if, if they train up I'm sure they see how hard I work in training um, and yeah all the young players that, that come to train are trying to help them as much as possible it's also nice that we have Rico and Oscar in the team as well that I can help them now and just try and give them some advice what it takes to, to work with a manager and yeah like I said I just want to be a great role model for, for the young kids and what advice do you give someone who who wants to? Who's going to work with this ultra-demanding manager? Just never stop loving football. Um, yeah, with Pep, he, he goes above and beyond to to make you a better player. So, yeah, if you have that hunger for football and want to improve every day, I don't think you can go too wrong. But who were you? In who were you speaking to? Who were you leaning on when you were that? When you were that age? When you were thinking, I just want to get that one appearance. Well, obviously, when I came into the team, we had Vincent Company as the captain, mm. and for me, he's one of the best captains I've ever had. He welcomed me very nice and put his arm around me. Uh, I remember there was Jaden and Brahim at the time as well in the changing room with me. And yeah, he was very, obviously very shy when we were younger coming into the first team, and he just made us feel welcome and just said, you know, express yourself in training and, and just be yourself. Um, so it's nice of Vinny to do that and it just made me feel comfortable straight away. When you said you were glimpsing first team players, who were your idols or the players you looked up to? I just loved Back David Silva, everything about him. Um, he was very humble off the pitch, um, very down to earth and yeah, on the field what a player. Um, his first touch, his awareness, he's someone I looked at and thought um, I'm a similar player in a way, similar, similar position. Um, yeah, he's someone I always looked up to. I know that family, it means a lot, a lot to you and the backstory t tells us that. Could I ask you a little bit about the 47? I know you've talked about yeah. it before, but I've never heard you talk, talk about that. And just tell me that story, because I know that you could have had Sergio's shirt, for example, when he went, couldn't you? Yeah. You, you said, no, this is what yeah, so, is on your breast there. Yeah. yeah, so obviously being a young player, you don't get many options of numbers to, to have on your shirt. <clears throat> so I remember I got a few numbers sent to me and not really any of them meant, meant anything to me, apart from obviously 47, because it's the age that my granddad died at. So I spoke to my dad and I was like, would you be happy if I wore it? And Is that your dad's dad? Yeah, my dad's dad. And he was like, yeah, if you, if you wear that, I'll be, um, I'll be amazing. So I took the shirt number and then, yeah, I just, I just love it ever since. I've got it tattooed on me now and it's just a shirt that I don't ever see, see me changing. And, he, and he's, you know, I was going to say, that's something that will stay with you all the way all the way through now. Definitely, it's nice to make your own legacy as well and I feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a strange number that not many people will go for but hopefully in years to come it's remembered as um, you know, 47 at City is Phil Foden so that's what I'd like to do. Can you remember what you were doing when you heard that Jur Jurgen Klopp was going? It was a Friday um, morning so you were probably here. No, I just remember seeing it on the news and things. Yeah, it was quite a surprise to me, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he's been such a brilliant manager. Um, to face his team is not nice, the, the way they press and the way they, they um, you know, attack so quick. So, yeah, it's such a shame to, to see him leave because um, I think he's good for the football game, for, for what, he's, what he's done. You know, he's changed um, Liverpool Football Club, so... Yeah, it's going to be sad to see him go. I don't think you get many City fans caught saying it's a shame. I think most of them are chuffed a bit. So no, nah, obviously it's been nice competing against his team for years. And yeah, it's, it's what you want, you know. You want to play against the best teams as a footballer. And yeah, 
that's what you want. You're not the only big talent in that England squad now, thankfully. I mean, what's the best way you can describe the Jude Bellingham phenomenon? Because he's taken to England like he's yeah. been playing there all his life. I can't believe his age, you know. I've never seen anyone so mature for their age. I feel like he's got a gift from God with his physique. Um, and it just shows that it, it is age you can play in the highest games and at the highest level. So not only him, you know, to have so many talented players in the England team is, is so so good and going into a major tournament, that's what you need. You need the bench also strong as well to, to come on and change the game. I think I probably know the answer to this question. Has he asked you for any advice? Jude? Yeah. Nah, <laughs> not me. Think so. I think there's uh, more senior players for that. Um, I don't think he needs any advice, to be honest. Um, he's an exceptional player. He's got a good head on his shoulders. I think he's got a good family around him as well. And he's someone I look at. And I can't really give him much advice because I don't see any weaknesses. So, so yeah, we definitely need him going into a major tournament um, at, at his best, um, as well as everyone. And hopefully we can achieve something with the national team. And you obviously got a big summer coming up, we, we presume you'll be in the squad, we can probably presume that. Um, I didn't actually know until reading a couple of things this week how you did that injury before the last before the last US final. I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, it's crazy. That. I was literally just walking in from training and I can't remember someone passed me the ball and I kind of like tried to do a silly touch and just I felt my foot go straight so what, away. What was it? What did you try? What was just a trick or something? Like, yeah, doing your control like the leg behind like this yeah. and then yeah, just my standing leg, I just felt like there was a crack in my foot, so I couldn't walk after. That must have been devastating. Yeah, devastating, especially being the day before the final. Um, I remember Gareth speaking to me and I just couldn't help but start crying. Really? I couldn't even get any words out because I was just, yeah, so upset. I mean, is that, did you, have you learnt a lesson from that in terms of no messing, you know, no... Do you know what? I have, you know, like even in training and stuff now... Um, I always think about that injury and think how easy that happened. Um, so I try and not like, well, you probably ask the coach and they probably say I'm lying, but I try not to do like too much now after training and stuff um, because I know how easy when you're playing a lot of games as well, injuries can happen. So it's definitely won't me up now for the future. Although I did see a photo shoot you did with a squire where you were doing back flicks in a car park <laughs> with, 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 a, with a coat on in Stockport. So you know what I mean? And what about when, you, when you're when kind of with your kids and that? Because obviously there'll be a ball involved. I mean, your lad's got almost, almost as many Instagram followers as you oh, now. Yes. But there must be a ball Getting around. jealous, you know, he's catching me up already. Yeah, well, I did, <laughs> I did, I did check. He's somewhere behind you, to be fair. Yeah, he'll catch me up, though, I think, in the future. He's only young, isn't he? But, so have you, have you got to be careful there as well when you're kind of in the garden? Or? Nah, I keep telling my son, though, he just keeps picking the ball up. I'm like, you're not going to be a keeper, are you? <laughs> I keep telling him to put the ball on the floor. Um, yeah, it's obviously nice to go home as well, like... To go back to your kids sometimes when a result hasn't gone your way. Um, yeah, I feel like if your life's good off the pitch, it'll show on the pitch as well. So I think that's important important as well. City haven't had as many Player of the Year awards over the years as you might think. Um, they've had, I think, two of the uh, PFA awards and three of the Football Writers Awards, I think, which is not that many given the number of family titles that have been won in the last 10 years. I think might fancy changing that. This year, I hope so. Might have a chance. <laughs> I hope so. I'm open up there in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that? I mean, again, some players will say, "Oh, individual awards don't don't matter to me." But is that? No, I think I said. List? I think I said in an early interview at the start of the season. I said, "I'm not going to lie. I, I want to try and be one of the best Premier League players this year. Um, I think I've got the ability and um, to, to to do it. So, um, I think this season." I've been doing well on my goals and assists and scoring important goals. So, so hopefully I can be up there with, with the best players in the league. And you've had the Young Player play of the Year award a couple of times, of course, we know that. But I mean, the big ones, the PFA one, the FWA one, they're serious, you know, you look down those, the list of names on those and you're talking serious, serious legends on, on that list. Yeah. You know. It'd be nice to be up there with them and be considering that, that debate is, is really nice. Um, there's been some exceptional players this year as well, so... It's going to be difficult. There's still six games to play and hopefully I can just keep keep up the good form. I think Rodri, I think he deserves yeah. it. I don't think he gets enough credit for, for what he does. If you look at his all-round game, um, I don't see a weakness to it. And Yeah, he's someone I look at and he's, he's very important for our team. So I think my votes go in there. You've actually said before that, that, I mean, uh, that it's, it's actually the defensive side of your team that wins 
that wins you everything. Yeah, it's true, man. When yeah. we defend good, we, we win games. Yeah. The defending starts from the front, of course, but I think we've got some of the best blockers in the world. I see it in training. Um, the defenders that we've got, I think, yeah, they're the best in the world.